Hey guys, we're in New York City, Brooklyn to be exact, and I'm at Propel Bikes. I'm with the founder, Chris Nolte. How's it going? Doing well. It's fun to come by because you got all these great bikes as well as just a whole bunch of accessories. And I wanted to talk about locks because uh, there's a lot more to this than just like, got a lock. There's a bunch of different kinds. There's a bunch of different ways to secure your bike. And I figured New York City, being a bigger city, you've got customers that probably have had their bikes stolen, and maybe you've even had that. And I, I just wanted to get your thoughts, maybe like a guided tour. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, security is a big deal in New York. It's a big challenge for us because, you know, people want nice things, but they don't want it to be ripped off. And unfortunately, yeah. it, it happens a lot in New York City. It happens a lot in a lot of major cities. And um, and so you know one way we combat that is with you know good locks. Hmm. Um, so we specifically work quite a bit with Avis in particular yeah. for a variety of reasons. One is they also make uh, e-bike lock cylinders, so it's really nice that we can get locks that are made to the same uh, key as the battery. Like for example, this this bike for example the the key is actually the same for the battery as it is for this lock that comes with the bike. Oh, cool. And so that's a really nice feature and I feel like it works really well. And they're also made in Germany and the, the quality is pretty high uh, compared to some of the other locks which might be made in China. Maybe that quality is not managed as well. So to touch on this, um, this is the Riesen Mueller Delight, right? That's right. So it's this great bike. It actually has two batteries. Each one has a locking like cylinder or core and then it comes with this Abus folding lock that uses the same key. So that way you don't have to have three keys or even two keys. Um, and what I've been told, you know, we've done a bunch of reviews on these bikes is sometimes you'll buy a bike uh, that doesn't have a lock. I mean, this is, how much is this bike, Chris? This is an expensive one. Yeah, it starts around $5,500. You know, so $5,500 bike, yeah, it comes with a lock and lights and a whole bunch of cool stuff. If you buy a cheaper bike, you know, some of the Bosch powered bikes are, you know, twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars. It might not have a lock, but a lot of times there's a, a code. It comes with a little card, and there's a code, and you can actually have that code That's mapped right. to a, a lock, right? Yeah, something just like this. Uh, this code here. So this is the X plus. Now X plus is the highest level security, and you actually can't. Uh, they they don't currently make a Bosch or Shimano lock cylinder with the X plus code. Okay. However, you can do a plus code, which is one level down in security. Not a major difference, but uh, but there is a difference there. And the key, it looks very similar, but it's it actually this would be a plus. Um, so let's just see to pull this guy out. Give you an idea. So this is a plus code card. And I, sh I should not show this to the whole world, but who knows? <laughs> uh, but basically, we can take this number, and we, we have a relationship with Avis where we're able to send away, and they can have a lock made. Say, this is a plus one, this is a plus one as well. So say if you wanted to have two locks that have the same key, we can just send away to Avis with this number, and we can say we want one of these models with the same Huh. Code. So it's not just the battery locks. It's it's like you can have multiple, like a folding lock and a U lock, so that you can secure the wheel with one and the frame with another or something. That's right. And and does that work with these the chains? It, it does as long as they are, as long as they are in the plus level. So like this is the X plus, but these are in the plus level, and th those would work in that similar fashion. Huh. Okay. You know, interesting. Um, a minute ago we talked about the X plus code and. Uh, this one won't work. Why do they even give you the code? Is it so you can have multiple plus locks that are key to like or? Yeah, so you can have multiple locks or it maybe, maybe for example, you lose your key and you need oh. to order an extra one. That's okay. another reason. Okay, that makes sense. So coming back to all of these different locks and there's different levels of security. I think I've looked at the back of some of these and there was like a little chart talking about security levels or something. Can you just give some idea? Is it mostly just about the dimensions or the time it takes to cut through? Uh, there's a variety of different tests that, that they go through in order to get their security level. But yeah, it's... it's Oh, the, that's what we should be looking at. So 12 versus 9. Right. So in bikes, 15. they go max 15. But actually, we have a lock that's that's one step up. And this is actually a lock that's more specifically made for motorcycles. Wow. And this is 20. So this is, goes up to 15. This goes up to 20. 
it's yeah. it's quite heavy and it's pretty expensive too. Wow. Um, but for some people, you know, if, if you're maybe you have a cargo bike or something like that, you can't lock it inside. You mm -hmm. have to lock it outside. This might be a good way to go, just so you have that added security. And it might be challenging to to break with some of the more traditional. Uh, Portable grinders or whatever, pry yeah, bars. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. I think that's that's something that's it's good to be mindful of also to, to kind of consider how people are breaking these locks because one of the most common ways in the city is a, is a portable angle grinder where they're actually cutting through the lock. Um, unfortunately, there's not really any lock that's going to really fully um, alleviate that challenge, but there's different ways that you can be mindful of that and you know maybe park it in a place where there's people around maybe you know for example if you're going out at night one practice that i try to do if there's a bar around maybe they have a doorman at the bar oh. i can park the bike right in front of the the bar with the doorman and you know so different things like that you think about and um and you, you know definitely think about it in a place like new york so even that like 300 hundred dollar lock with a portable angle grinder someone can it's, you know, it just takes them a few minutes and they're just grinding on it? Or? You would probably need one of the more powerful ones and you might even need more than one battery to do it. So oh, wow. it's, and then if you, maybe if you had that and then you also had a chain and then you have a chain with, with you know, some material on the outside of it and it's making it more and more difficult for them to actually get through. And one of the things actually I don't have here yet because it's a new product, but you actually highlighted in the Abus video um, at Interbike is now they have an alarm lock. So oh, yeah. all these measures can add up to make your bike, you know, a, 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 as you said, you know, not not being the weak link in the chain or the, yeah. or you know, if they're going to go for the easier targets, generally speaking. And the alarm lock, it actually would like notify you on your phone. So there was like a. A beeping noise and then did it have a smart that particular one does not we've seen a lot of different smart locks kind of come out on Kickstarter and this and that but we haven't seen too many in the market yet okay uh, I'm, so that I'm one just does a siren it, but... okay okay so th I'm, I'm also thinking about was the boomerang or something the boomerang yeah the I GPS think thing you, you that you put on that one, I, think, I right? did yeah and it was it was like how accurate is it and you know I think visually it was trying to stand out it like blinks it's like don't steal me right, um, so right. some of this stuff I suppose if you're cutting through a lock and it starts to beep who knows if it's going to contact an app or something so that's yeah it, anyway it's a good memory of, yeah. of that interview and getting some feedback I noticed that there are the smaller lighter weight chains up there and some of them are combination and then this one has a plug on the end i've seen some some e-bikes that actually have an interface where you can plug the right into the side of the bike that's right so this one would work with what's called like a frame lock or a cafe lock where you know actually they show a little picture of the oh, yeah. cafe lock um so we do a lot of bikes with this style lock it's particularly um, popular in europe and you can use that cafe lock with something just like this and lock that to a pole or something of that sort. For people who aren't familiar with cafe lock, can we, can we look at that real quick? Sure. Um, so this is one, this is not a, actually I think we have, yeah, you know what? This is actually Abus uh, cafe lock. So this would be compatible with, with that lock. So the key goes in here. Yep. Oh, I actually have the key here, oh. so I can demonstrate this. Let me come over on this side. Get the lighting sure. better. Yeah. Let's. I'll, I'll go this side, so get some good lighting. And actually, I could probably even grab that block and see. Let me go grab it. It's kind of fun. Sometimes we just shoot these and experiment and wander in different directions, but it's it's something that I've seen before when reviewing. Yeah. Um, it's neat to to talk about it a little bit in depth. Sure, so basically this little mechanism here can stick right inside here and we can... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so basically you see this loop, you can use this loop and you can attach this to either a bike rack or a pole. This alone is probably not secure enough for New York City, um, but it might be good as part of your security measure. 
Right, we've been eating lunch over the past couple of days and we've just locked our bikes together because we're sitting there, you can see out the window and that's what the cafe lock is all about. Like a minute ago, you could see that, that silver thing slide through. Basically, it immobilizes the rear wheel. That's right. So someone, they could hop on this and pedal for like a couple inches before the bike's gonna stop and they're gonna realize like, oh, that back wheel's locked up. Most electric bikes, like especially these recent Mueller's, it's like 50, 55 pounds. So you can imagine trying to lift it up or something. It just it just doesn't work. And if someone's watching, and they, as long as they don't have a van or a truck that they're hoisting it into, the cafe lock is is for quick errands. And then with this additional chain, that makes it so that the, not only is the bike immobilized, but you're also like connected to a pole or railing. Right, and so. it, and it's great in those scenarios exactly as you described, where you're eating, you know, at a restaurant, you're near the window or something like that, and it's really just to prevent somebody from walking away from it. And that's a lightweight one. So this, this lock here, it's like 45, 46 bucks. I don't know when, does, does anyone buy these? Like, is this for yeah. a seat? So yeah, these, sure. these are more commonly used for seat post or something like that. So you can basically attach the saddle to, in this case, a frame or-, or um, A bigger lock. So you can kind of lock the whole bike plus the saddle. Yeah, it, that's absolutely. relevant when you have a quick release um, seat, seat post clamp okay absolutely yeah and it and it can allow some level of adjustability but still maintaining this this lock um so that's pretty cool sometimes in the city actually pretty common you see people use old chains mm -hmm. to lock up the saddle in that way but then it's challenging if you ever need to remove the seat post or something like that so mm. it's a little bit more of an elegant uh, way to do that and protects the bike with that little wrap around the edge. What, when would someone get this mini one? I mean, like, I, I get it, the really tall, long ones, the motorcycle lock, a, a lot of these bikes you sell, they're the price of a motorcycle. I'm talking $5,000 sure. sure. or something like that. So yeah, you, you might wanna secure it with the really tough lock. This one's extra long, so you have room to, to reach the post and get your frame in it. Some of them are wider, but what, the small one, how does, what's that all about? Yeah, so if you have most of the rest of your bike locked up, sometimes you can just use a small lock and you know lock it to a post or something like that. It really depends on what you're locking it to. Quite commonly in, in the city, it's kind of difficult to see outside here now, but, but just a, a standard street pole could be one way that you can use a small U-lock like that and just lock the frame directly to um, to a signpost. And you started out by saying if the rest of your bike's locked up, where you were talking about like the hardware? Right, so one of the things, if, if you look at most bikes, uh, a lot of parts are vulnerable. So if you're kind of thinking as you're a thief, yeah. um, there's many parts that can be removed from the bike quite easily. And if you're locking for extended periods, you definitely want to try to secure them as much as possible. So what are some of the, I mean, it'd be a quick release, a collar. So this, this seat post, I mean, for example, this is a five millimeter, you can loosen this bolt and pull the seat post out. Hmm. It's not as easy as say a, a quick, quick release. release, you know, which something like this, where you're gonna just pull the lever. So this is this is particularly vulnerable. Yeah, and that's so a nice saddle, a cellular rail, and you got a seat post suspension. So someone could seal that. I've seen it even on like universities where someone will just take the seat off and throw it in the ditch just yeah. for no reason. Or you know your your wheels. Uh, it's it's sad, but you, we we saw it just the other day. Someone in Philadelphia locked their front wheel only. Like literally, it was someone like locked, got my bike locked, and someone just quick released and took the whole bike and they left the wheel. That's right, yeah. So one of the things definitely being mindful of is to, is to try to lock the most valuable parts of your bike, definitely locking the frame of the bike, but having a quick release front wheel in a place where it's less secure is definitely one of the more vulnerable parts of the bike. And even if you're using a light chain with that, the reality is a thief more than likely is not gonna go through the trouble to remove that chain just for a wheel. Yeah. But there's other things that you can use, something like a pit lock, for example. This is uh, another German company, actually. So they make these different uh, skewers. So you can do, this one would be for a front, and front wheel, rear wheel, and then for a seat post, for example. And then you have these uh, pits. So this would be the pit key, which would open this. And it's, it's very specific to the individual so this is actually where the key is. Hmm. So yeah. it's just like a special like design that fits over that that you can't really get to unless you have a special key? That's right. Yep. Okay, and I've seen other companies that make these. Is there anyone else you want to shout out yeah, to? Yeah, so is this is another one called Pinhead. Yeah. Um, 
little bit of a simpler system. So basically you have, but it's, but it's very similar. So this is a front wheel, rear wheel, and then this is for the seat post. It comes with a seat post collar, and then this would be the key that you use. And, and we're starting to see some other new systems come on the market as well. Abus has their own system where you actually don't use a key. We don't actually have it on display here. Oh, it's a, yeah, you have to like tip the bike on its side for it to right. unlock. Yeah, so Abus does that one. And Kryptonite, for example, you have to turn the bike upside down to, oh, wow. to utilize the system. Um, and then there's another company called Hexlox, which actually just uses a little magnetic part and it goes right into the, uh, into the bolt um, in there. So it prevents anyone from sticking a tool in. We think that system's quite cool. It's a fairly new system out there on the market. I think it's gonna do pretty well, okay. but it doesn't solve every problem. Sure, well, and it's like, okay, so the little vulnerable parts stop being quite so vulnerable, but someone could still cut through your lock or they, you know, a lot of times what I would do is use a U-lock through part of my frame and then I'll put a long cable through the wheels and then another little cable, a leash for the saddle um, and I still keep my bike close and I park my bike inside because I don't, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but I guess, you know, being smart, I want, I'd rather ride my bike to work every day and enjoy it um, than not. And the lock makes me feel safe during the day. You can also get like bike insurance. You can get bike insurance. Yeah, there's a couple different companies that do that. I think one of the prominent ones is Velo Insurance. Mm -hmm. There's another company called Spoke Bicycle Insurance. I don't know if they're around anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Check it out. Yeah. Chime in if you know. Some people's insurance will cover their bikes, but they won't cover uh, the the primary value or all of your accessories. So, like, they'll depreciate your bike steeply over time. And yeah, one thing to be mindful of for homeowners insurance and renters insurance, you can talk to them about you know if your bike would be covered. But with electric bikes specifically. It's something that a lot of times they have exclusions for anything with the motor. Uh -huh. So make sure you be very clear if you're speaking to you know your insurance company about that. Hmm. One of the other things that's come up in in the city specifically is you know where do you store your bike, right? Yeah. So now any new buildings that are built in New York City, it's actually a law that they need to have bike storage in the building, which is quite really? cool. Like a bike cage, like a. Uh, yeah, either that or some sort of accommodations. Maybe they don't have room in the building. Maybe they you know share some space in a parking garage there's different ways that they can be accommodating but on top of that for uh, commercial spaces so say for example you have space in your office you want to bring your bike inside yeah there's some offices that will kind of look down upon you about bringing your bike inside but yeah. it's actually a new york city law that if you're able to bring your bike inside if you if you have space for it inside the building has to give you access wow so it's kind of an interesting thing and i don't know if this is really a law in, in maybe in other cities but it's something to be mindful of and i think you know in a place in like new york city where space is limited and and theft is a big issue these are some of the things that could be considered that's neat that's the city's working together to try to make bikes um a little bit more usable. Absolutely. We've also got these folding locks. We haven't really talked about those. Well, why would you want a folding lock and what's the difference between some of these, Chris? Yeah, so the folding lock, I mean, the nice thing about it, it's just a really clean design. It, it folds down really compact. I mean, this is this is a particularly unique one. It's fairly new from Abus, but um, this design, basically the, the it folds out like this. So you create a, a similar space as a, as a U-lock, but it's actually a little bit larger and you can get around things that you might not otherwise. Hmm. Um, is it weigh about the same? The weight is pretty similar. And the nice thing about these is you can mount them a little bit differently on the bike where you lock a lot of times it's, it's kind of challenging to do. Well, this is a perfect example over here on the delight. You can see it's stored right there between the seat tube and this fancy rear rack that they got going on. A lot of times uh, electric bikes, you have the big batteries and they'll, they'll have a couple of bottle cage bosses, but sometimes it's barely enough room for a bottle so folding locks a good option yeah this is it opened here and basically just close it like that okay this one's rubberized and yeah, yeah so it protects your frame pretty well um so for myself personally oftentimes we'll use this and then maybe have on top of that a a u-lock in my bag so this is uh, this is this uh plus 640 which works really well it's pretty lightweight, and if I need to, sometimes if I'm just going for a really quick run somewhere, I could even just put it in my pocket or put hmm. it, sometimes even like put it just like in my belt. 
Yeah. Um, and, and really, for myself personally, if I'm locking the bike for extended period, say for over an hour or so, I'll usually use three locks, which wow. might seem like a little bit overkill, but from my experience, I think that if I can you know, just make it so it, it seems like a real challenge to unlock this thing, that's, that's what I try to do. So I'll usually use the folding lock, a U-lock, and a chain on top of that, um, which you know, I, I think the nice thing when you have an electric bike, it's not too big of a deal to carry a little bit extra Luxury. weight in locks. Especially with a lot of these urban bikes now, they have racks and stuff, and you've got that pannier that just clips on and clips off. So you're taking, usually you're taking something into the store anyway, your wallet, your phone. That's right. You've got that little like, you know, dare I, it's not really a purse, but it's like your little tote, right? Yeah. And bring yeah. it inside. Um, at the risk of turning this into an Abus commercial, uh, we've got this interesting demo here and I thought it'd be fun to look at. Here, let's pull it out. So what's what's going on here, Chris? So this is showing actually the locking uh, shackles, I guess, or I'm not sure what you would call it, but mm -hmm. um, so this is how it kind of locks and unlocks. So that when it's unlocked, it allows these these different mechanisms to move, but when it's in the locked position, it, it keeps these in place and you can't remove it. One of the things that's particularly unique about these X Plus locks is that they have locking pieces on both top and bottom. Oh. Where some of them, it will just be on one side, so then if you cut the one side, the lock can just twist and open up. But this, if you wanted to actually uh, remove the lock, you'd have to cut both sides. I see. I see. Yeah, I'm actually a fan of like Blackburn. If you've sure. seen, they yeah, have absolutely. some locks online, they do. and they lock at both points as well. Um, just some of the other companies. There's Kryptonite. I remember years ago there was some concern about you could take a ballpoint pen and put the lid in there and unlock it. Have you had any challenges with any of these companies, or is there are there other brands that you want to call out as being? Uh, yeah, I mean, On Guard. You right, know, there's, there's the On cheap... Guard. There's Kryptonite. I mean, Kryptonite is probably one of the major companies in the space. You know, I think that from our experience, the Abus locks are pretty similar in quality. Actually, some some are seem to be higher quality. They're also made in Germany, so it's a little bit different. But it's just kind of a personal preference. We tend to gravitate towards them. Kryptonite, they do have this insurance policy, but one thing that we learned is that it's not covered if they break it with a power tool. So what? From our experience, like that's kind we'll cover of cover your bike if it's stolen, but not if it's stolen. Yeah, so by like the most popular means of stealing. E exactly. Bummer. So that, that's really our concern, and, and we feel that if if we were to sell that product, we might be kind of misleading a customer. So okay, interesting, interesting feedback. It's great to look over so many different ways to secure your bike. And I know we bounced around here a little bit. It's cool I'm trying to make this particularly relevant to electric bikes since that's what I focus on. Is there any other thought you have before we you know, close up here? And uh, Last thing I should mention is one thing that's particularly challenging on electric bikes and particularly as they're starting to use more mountain bike technology is through axles. Oh yeah. So okay. like this, for example, this is a Suntour through axle. And at this moment, there's not a specific like pit lock or, or a pin head or anything like that that works specifically with that. I have seen some people kind of hack this a little bit and, and basically, because inside the through axle, there's actually a nine millimeter quick release that runs through and it's effectively 135 millimeter. So huh. you, could, you could replace that. We've seen uh, somebody do it before. And that's like the, the width, the hub spacing width of a rear Of a rear axle. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you kind of use the rear axle technology for the front and it's inside. When, when he talks about through axles, this is 15 millimeters. Um, you know, the, the length here is probably 100 and then 15 millimeters here. Uh, most skewers are like nine millimeters. That's the standard, like kind of basic bike for, for city use. Yeah, look at that. See how thick that is? It's that 15 millimeters. Right. Um, so um, that's, that's a, this one is the Suntour one. There are some that are made from, uh, for like the Fox forks and stuff like that, maybe Rock Shocks as well. Yeah. There's a company called Robert Axle Project, and they make uh, axles for like if you want to run a trailer on a through axle bike, stuff like oh, that. Cool. But they also do some locking uh, mechanisms for that as well. It's pretty Fantastic. Cool. I'm glad you mentioned that, Chris. Yep. Um, just something extra to think about. Definitely like locking up your front wheel um, so that a thief wouldn't be able to, to do the whole quick release thing on you. 
I think that's about it, you guys. We've gone pretty deep. I'm gonna post this in the accessories area of the Electric Bike Review forums. Um, you can chime in with your own solutions. Over time, there's always new stuff, link to it or whatever. Tried to make this, it's kind of brand agnostic and cover a bunch of different stuff, but we are at Chris's shop and you're, you carry Abus and you know they seem to do a pretty good job. So again, I, I wanna thank you, Chris, and um, Absolutely. hope you guys have some fun out there and as always, ride safe.